All right, welcome to Wash Symposium. I'm Austin, just hanging out at the park. It's uh, evening, my, my wife and kids just went back and I'm hanging out, making a little bit of a video here. Um, so, now, let's talk about equality. I've been meaning to talk about this. And in fact, I pictured myself making this video in a busy station, not, not in a park at dusk. Um, now, uh, before I do that, would you guys like to hear a little bit of ABC song? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Now I know what A, B, C is. Next time won't you sing with me? All right, now that that's out of the way, um, let's talk about equality. Now, I talked about balance, okay? A couple of ta takes on balance uh, in another video, and my idea of balance is just having a group of watches that will fit any sort of situation. Um, kind of a weird take on balance, but anyway, that's what it was. And, um, and I talked about, um, about uh, you know watches uh, kind of doing it for you or not doing it for you and about how if they do it for you it's not really a choice you know um, attraction is not a choice you guys remember that um, now equality what am I talking about uh, well it has to do with equality in a collection and and your conception of the mm, I guess uh, equalness of your watches uh, what do I mean by that I mean uh, um, how equal are they in your eyes? Now, um, looking at my collection, I've got obviously uh, three sports Rolexes. They're steel, um, and they're you know they're all on oyster bracelets. They're pretty samey. I mean, I don't think my wife knows the difference between my watches. I mean, she, you know, if I showed her my GMT. Uh, she would very likely think it was the Submariner, or you know, she didn't know what a Submariner is, but um, I could show her the GMT and show it to her the next day, but instead show her the, show her the, uh, got that one, killed him, uh, made him pay for that meal. Um, and, uh, and she wouldn't really know the difference, okay? She just, uh, you know, she just wouldn't register. Um, so, uh, but what I'm talking about is, is, you know, in terms of equality, is how you view your watches. Are they all, you know, equally good to you? And looking at my collection, you guys would probably, if you didn't really know the nuances of the watches, you'd probably think, yeah, I mean, they're all, they're all sports Rolexes. They're all, they're all pretty much very similar pieces. Now, of course, the GMT is a little bit more uh, desirable at the moment, but, uh, but aside from that, they're pretty samey, right? They're pretty uniform. Um, but that's not the case. When you look a little closer, um, it's just natural to uh, look at very similar pieces as not really equal. And you know, when I decided to you know, to get sports Rolexes and steel ones. Um, I think before I really had the collection, I kind of imagined, you know, having very similar pieces and because they were similar, I wouldn't really favor any one. I mean, uh, you know, they're all more or less kind of about the same price in a way and made out of the same material and can stand up to the same situation. So 
I wouldn't really favor one over the other, and that's one thing I didn't want to do. I didn't want to sort of depend on one watch and hoard the others. I wanted to e use all of them equally, and that's one of the reasons I, I went for sports, steel, oyster bracelet, having Rolexes. But they still are not equal um, in my eyes, uh, and and it has to a lot uh, a lot to do with uh, with the, their history. Um, you know, if I've got, if I had gotten all of them new, uh, I probably wouldn't be having this conversation. But you know, the the start in chronological order of how I got them. The the sub was. Um, Okay, it had been polished, and it didn't come with a box and papers, and and now I've got an aftermarket bezel insert on it. So I don't really look at that as like a collectible watch in the sense that I don't think it's going to you know shoot up in price. I don't think collectors would really want that watch. Could I sell it? Yeah, but the person that would buy it would be uh, you know a, a regular person that wanted to use it, not hoard it, collect it, you know. That kind of thing so and the same goes for the explorer 2 um that's got an aftermarket uh crystal uh, the crystal had a little something in it and i just decided to replace the crystal and uh and so that hasn't had a polish right uh unlike the sub so I tend to hoard myself a little bit more. I don't use it as much as, say, this. Hadn't been pol well, I haven't had it polished. It's got nicks on it. It's begging for a polish. So I tend to use this. So this watch, I don't view as equal in my collection. So it kind of gets more wrist time because I'm a little bit more cavalier with it and casual with it. Um, all right, now let's talk about the GMT Master II. Um, that's by far, I think, the pinnacle of my collection it's box papers it's in really good condition and here's the thing it's never been polished never been polished it's uh, one of those virginal pieces so when I look at that piece I think that's the kind of thing a collector would want that's the kind of thing that would uh, be worth holding on to and putting in a safe and not really uh, breaking out for fear of messing it up and that's a shame because I got my Rolexes and my watches to use, not to hoard. Yet, I can't really help but hoard that watch because of the potential, you know? I mean, I get a, I get a big gash on that. Well, it's going to have a big gash or I'm going to have to deflower the deflower, you know what I mean by that, um, polish it. And then it's not an unpolished piece anymore. So... Uh, Equality um, is uh, is difficult to achieve, especially if you're going pre-owned. Okay, um, I talked about regrets in another video. Are there regrets? Well, not big ones, but yeah, I, I, I'm sort of on the fence about whether the tritium dial is a regret or not. I mean, I do like the idea of having a tritium dial that's going to age, um, and you know, will the Will I have to get Luminova hands at some point? Perhaps. But I've kind of come to grips with that. And in a way, it's like, well, you know, I mean, that would be sort of unfortunate. But I'd still have that that dial. You know, that, that if, if it started uh, getting a patina, I'd still have that to enjoy. And that's better than nothing, right? I think it would be a terrible decision to replace everything. And then all of a sudden, no patina, okay? Everything, everything would be uniform, but it would just be... Uh, you know, uh, no patina to enjoy. It's better to have a little patina than no patina, I guess, is what I'm saying. Um, but if I were to do it again, would I would I would I go for the tritium? And, and that's interesting. I'm I'm on the fence. I don't know if I would or not. Uh, I might. I might. Um, but would I would I go for a less polished piece? Possibly. That's kind of my fetish now. Okay, unpolished pieces. And that's tough, you know, when you when you see a 20-year-old watch, it's, you know, the chances of it not being polished are so low. And not polished and in good nick. Now, that's a tough thing to find, at least affordable watches uh, that, that fall in that category. I kind of lucked out with the GMT Master II.
right? So, um, you know, as far as uh, regrets with the Explorer 2, not a lot, but um, it had had a polish, and uh, and do I regret not getting one that hadn't been polished? Yeah, in a way, but I don't, I don't really know if I could have found one, and if I did find one, could I have afforded it, you know? So, um, this had had a service from the place that was selling it, and I don't really like aftermarket services, okay? And that's just sort of par for the course with the secondhand market. They buy a watch uh, and they they service it as cheaply as possible, i.e. not through RSC, Rolex Service Center. Uh, they polish it and they service it, so it's been serviced, but um, but it's not gonna be as, as well serviced as RSC would do. Um, you know, they, that, that's a $700 service, whereas they can probably do it in-house for what? Uh, for free or, or you know, outsource that to, to uh, independent for what, 200, 300? So, uh, so anyway, would I call those regrets? Uh, not really. I mean, it's easy to look back at a purchase and say, well, I really wish it had never been polished. Yeah, of course. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so, so anyway, all of my pieces in my eyes are not equal okay the GMT Master 2 is up here um, I don't wear it a lot I should it's a shame I hoard it that's not cool um, but I think there's a potential with that watch and I would hate I would hate for something to happen to it you know I hate to, to nick it in some way it's just it's sort of it's it's, it's nearly perfect you know unpolished and I, I don't want to I don't want to mess that up um, down, down a tier would probably. Well, I'd say the the Explorer Two and the and the um, Explorer Two and the the Sub are about on the same level. But I think the Sub's been polished, so it's a little little higher. It's it's uh, you know the case is pretty pristine. Um, you know, since the polish, it's gotten a few few little nicks here and there. But uh, but but this this sort of has a polishing. It needs it needs a polish. So so it's sort of the beater of the bunch. I mean, I don't use it as a beater, but, you know, I take care of it, obviously, but, uh, but I really relax more with this watch on than I would, say, the GMT Master 2, right? Um, you know, I hit a door jam with this. Not a big deal. It's going to need polish anyway. Do that with the GMT Master 2, and, and it's like, yeah, that's, uh, did I gouge it? All right, so, uh, equality in a collection um, for you know for the outside world uh, the pieces might seem very equal but for you who know the nuances of, of your watches uh, you realize that uh, that they're not and within your collection there's sort of a, a lack of equality you know conceptualizing your your watches uh, as you know a better or worse or you know this and that and it, and it changes the way you you wear them and when you break them out, how much you you use them. So, uh, yeah, it's just something to think about. Uh, you know, quality is a, a good thing in a collection because you're probably going to use all the pieces more, but uh, but it's always nice to have one of those, like, really special pieces that, you know, have, has never been polished, um, even though it means that you have a tendency to hoard it. Anyway, let me know what you think. Take care. See you next time.